Okay, in this video, we're going to go over the 2.7 notes. So, as you can see on the top here, you have your homework right there from the textbook. There are some terms that you should already be aware of that we've done in previous sections, but I've just presented them here again so that we can reinforce them before we go into this section. So, the first is cost. So, cost is a, a function of what you're producing. So, this is the cost that a company would incur by producing something. So it's going to be a function of x and that's why we have it written as c of x. The next one is revenue, capital R, and revenue is generated by selling however many units of a product that you end up selling. And so revenue is also a function of x. Profit will always be presented with a capital P. So be aware that um, capital P is profit Small p is price, and we'll get to that in a second. Profit forever and ever will be revenue minus cost. They're not going to tell you that in a problem or on a test or assessment. They're going to just tell you, calculate the profit, and they'll give you um, the components that you need to create the profit equation. So those components are going to end up being revenue minus cost. So know these, be familiar with these, the other thing I want you to know as we get into cost is that whenever I say marginal, marginal will always mean the first derivative. And remember, we are optimizing. So in the case of cost, an optimization would be a minimization of cost. Revenue, it would be an op optimization, would be maximizing your revenue. And for profit, an optimization would involve maximizing as well. In all of those cases, you are taking the first derivative and finding your critical value. Don't lose sight of what we're doing. The reason why you're taking the first derivative, that, that's going to indicate a max or a min, and that's how you're going to find it using calculus. Okay, let's go on to the first topic, which is cost. So it says, suppose that the cost function for a manufacturer is given by C of X equals 10 to the negative 6 times x cubed minus point zero zero three x squared plus five x plus a thousand dollars. All right, so the reason why I picked this, this is a pretty easy problem, but the way they are denoting the um, coefficient of the cubic term is what makes this unique. So you need to understand that that is one times ten to the negative six, which is Put your little decimal and, you, and count five zeros. One, two, three, four, five, and a one. That's what that value is. And you need to be comfortable changing it um, to this numerical form in order to take a derivative. Okay, so technically you're going to have a zero in front also. So how do I know that that's correct? Well, if I move my decimal place to the right, one, two, three, four, five, six, that's how I know that is 1 times 10 to the negative 6. All right, so it says describe the behavior of the marginal cost. I can't do that until I have the marginal cost. And then it also asked me to sketch the graph of C of X. So finding marginal cost, I'm going to write out what cost is taking that first coefficient out of scientific notation. So again, put your decimal, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and one more, and a one, and you're set as your coefficient of x cubed. Then minus 0 0.003 x squared plus 5x plus 1,000. Okay, so what does marginal cost equal? Take your derivative. Again, be careful with your zeros. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 3 times 1 is 3 x squared minus point zero zero six and that's going to have a plain old x at that point and then plus five all right I'm gonna so that's our marginal cost I'm going to backtrack for one second look back at your cost function can you tell me what is the marginal cost what is the uh, fixed cost and what are the variable costs so you should be looking and saying wait a second, let me see where I have x's. There is no x here, so that is a fixed cost. By definition, fixed costs do not vary 
with the amount of a unit produced. And that's exactly the case here. The rest of the course, costs that are listed there are all variable costs because as you change the X that you're producing, those costs will impact the total cost. All right, so those are things to keep in mind. Following through with that logic, if $1,000, the red that I've underlined, is your fixed cost, if I ask you to find marginal cost, which is the change in cost with production, you would expect that that fixed cost would not be a part of that. And that's exactly what happens when we take that first derivative. The fixed costs fall away. They do not change on the margin, and therefore they are not a component of marginal costs. Okay, so that's an important thing to recognize. Okay, also, another thing to think about is, can we make a statement about the marginal cost function now? So look at what you have. Uh, look particularly at the coefficient to x squared. So that coefficient to x squared is a positive number. Doesn't really matter what it is, it's a positive number. Therefore, my marginal cost is going to be a parabola, because I have an x squared as my highest power of x, and that parabola is going to be facing up, and if it's facing up, then I'm going to be minimizing my cost in the optimization, which is what I want to do. All right, so continue on. If I solve for the critical value, we're going to get, so let me see what, how I'm going to do this and where I'm going to put it. So let me change my color again. We'll go back to a dark color. If I set C, if I set C prime of X equal to zero, what I will get that's going to be germane to my discussion is an X, so I'm going to come over here and say my X critical value will be a thousand units. If I produce a thousand units, I want to know what is the marginal cost. So that marginal cost, I plug in the 1,000 units, and I'm going to get, at the margin, it's going to cost $2 per unit. All right, that's the marginal cost. What other questions could I answer at this point? Well, I could answer what is my total cost if I produce a 1,000 by plugging in that 1,000 in the original cost equation. So those are some things that you want to be able to discuss based on your results of your first derivative. Okay, other, other things to think about here. They asked us to sketch the graph of CX. So it's just going to be a sketch. So I really had to play around with my graphing calculator to get a window that I can see. So you can't just say um, zoom fit. You really have to set up your window so that you're in the first quadrant and you know that um, cost, if you produce nothing, cost is already $1,000. So you know cost is going to go up pretty high. And we've just found that the uh, marginal cost um, of $2 happens where X is 1000 So therefore, you know your X is going to go up pretty high. So with that in mind, when I did put it in my graphing calculator and get a good window, it kind of is going to look like this. Okay, it's a cubic, so it's going to turn a little bit and go on up. So that's going to be what my cost function is going to look like. It's going to look like your classic, your classic cubic. So let's next talk about graphing the marginal cost function. All right, so hopefully you've thought about that for a second. It is going to be a parabola, so my marginal cost, and I'll change my color for you, is going to be kind of like this. I know that this section right here will have a slope of zero and that happens where my production level is a thousand. So my um, marginal cost, the y-intercept, is going to be at, at five. And um, so let's just say this is five right here. Start here go down, I know that my marginal cost is minimized 
when the cost is 2 and this is a thousand. So what is this? This is my marginal cost. All right, original function, cubic, where the cubic has a slope of zero, where the cubic kind of turns, that's going to be my minimum production level. All right, when I graph my marginal cost, I can see that it happens at a cost of $2 and the unit production is 1000 all right, so that's all I wanted to do on this page. Let's go ahead to the next page. Okay, on this next page, I'm going to do more talking than anything else. So we're speaking about revenue. So in general, a business is concerned not only with its cost, but also with its revenue. So we're going to isolate revenue for a second. Okay, revenue you get. Uh, by uh, is a function of what you produce. Okay, if you produce 10 units and you sell it for five dollars, your revenue is fifty dollars. So that's one thing to keep in mind. Now, in the past, we are very accustomed to them just giving us a revenue function, and then we take the first derivative and we maximize our revenue, and life is all happy. That's not generally the way life goes. Usually, um, you have to build a revenue function. So, for example. You want to get the idea in your head that revenue equals price, so the price is the small p, times what you sell, which is the x. So in economics terms, revenue equals price times quantity produced. Okay, and that makes sense if you think about your little lemonade stand. The more lemonade you sell at a certain price, the higher your revenue. You figure out your revenue by saying price times quantity sold. Okay, so then there are two more complicating factors. If you have a business that's relatively small, your sales are minuscule in the big picture, and therefore your sales do not impact the price. So if that's the case, then your revenue curve looks like this. As you... Uh, Sell more, you make more. Upward sloping curve. Makes perfect sense. If, however, you have a monopoly, so say something like OPEC or any place that has a monopoly, they are the, the biggest seller. What you sell will impact the price. So you have a demand curve for your product that is downward sloping. At higher prices, the public demands less. Think about gas. When the price of gas goes up, people try to consume less gas. They might consolidate their trips. They might, take, might, might not take a vacation that involves a lot of um, driving. They might carpool. All those things happen in response to a um, higher price. If the price goes down, people are willing to buy more. All of a sudden, you're taking those vacations. You're not carpooling. You're making several trips. So that's what happens in the real world in a monopoly uh, situation. So your demand curve is your classic downward sloping demand curve they speak about in economics classes. In that case, your price is now a function of what you sell. Your price is not a fixed number like it is in the case right here where your revenue is just price as a constant times x which will vary. Now in your second case your revenue is still price times quantity but look what your price is. Your price is a function of what you sell. Okay, So that's a whole different scenario. So revenue equals price times quantity Sometimes price is a constant, sometimes price is a function of x. So keep that straight, and we'll go on to the next page. All right, the top of this next page, it talks about maximizing revenue. Remember, we already know that revenue is price times quantity. So little p times quantity. So the problem states the demand equation for a certain product is this. 
So what's a demand equation? A demand equation is a price equals equation. So here, price is a function, not a constant. They ask us to find the level of production that results in maximum revenue. So what we're going to do is we're going to say we know that our revenue equals little p times quantity, and in this case, quantity will be x. So once again, revenue equals, take your demand equation. They're not going to call it a price equation. They're going to call it a demand equation. And how does this look? It's a line. Here's your little p. Here's your x. Look at the slope. The slope is negative. It starts at 6 and goes down. That is a line. It looks less like a line than what I just drew, but it's a line with a slope of 1 half. That's called a demand equation. Think of it as a price equation if you want, but it's going to be referred to as a demand equation. So revenue equals price, which is a function, so it's 6 minus 1 half x. Put that in parentheses and multiply it by x. You're still building your revenue equation. Distribute the x, you get 6x minus 1 half x squared. What is that? Oh, that's a parabola. What face? Which way does that parabola face? It looks to me like it's downward facing, which will ensure that I'm maximizing revenue because the leading coefficient is going to be negative. Okay, so you want to understand your parabolas. Let's take our first derivative. We get 6 minus, and then 2 times 1 half is going to be just 1, so 6 minus x. So that is your marginal revenue. Set that equal to zero, and I find that my best uh, production level should be six. So x equals six units. What about the price? Can I figure out what price I should charge if I want to sell six units because I know that six units maximizes my revenue? And how do I know that? Well, let's just check it with a second derivative. Second derivative is negative. Second derivative is negative, therefore it's downward sloping. And I know that my function is concave down, and I have maximized my revenue. Let's go back up, because we can determine the price we should set so that we sell 6 units. So 6 minus 1 half, the x we got was 6, will equal my price. 1 half times 6 is 3, so 6 minus 3 is 3, and that should be the price. We also could figure out your revenue. What would be your revenue? Well, the revenue is a function of x. My x is going to be 6. Revenue equals the price, which I just figured out was 3, times the product produced, which was 6. Therefore, my revenue is $18. So you should be able to answer all those questions based on the demand equation. So let's go to the bottom of this page. Now in this problem, they don't give us a revenue function. Well, they don't, and they don't give us a price function. We're going to have to figure these things out. So the problem is setting up a demand equation. And remember, a demand equation is your price on the y-axis, your x on the x-axis, and it's, I'm trying to find a downward sloping demand curve. So WMA Bus Lines offers sightseeing tours of Washington, D.C. One tour priced at $7 per person, so I'm going to develop some data. So here's my price, here's my quantity. Okay, the first price they talk about, one tour priced at $7 a person. Here's my $7. Okay, so we've got that price of 7 they had an average demand of about a thousand customers. So we're going to say it is a thousand customers. Um, when the price was lowered to six dollars, all right, here's your next price, the weekly demand jumped to about twelve hundred. So here's twelve hundred customers. Assuming that the demand equation is linear, which is what I assumed here, Find the tour price that should be charged per person to maximize the total revenue each week. Okay, so what is the slope of that demand equation? The slope is going to be, so m equals 
change in y, which is p, over change in x, which is x. So let's figure that out. $7 minus $6 is a change in p, and 1,000 minus 1,200 is the change in x. So that's going to be 1 over a negative 200. So I just put the negative up top. That is my slope. So far, I want a linear demand equation. So y equals negative 1 over 200 x plus b. I don't know the b. What will I do? Let's plug in what we have. So I'm going to use these points. So my y value, and it's really the p value, so let me just change it to that so that we're consistent and I don't confuse anybody, including myself. So, price I'm going to try is $6. Here's my slope that I just derived, and my quantity is 1,200. Then that's plus B. Okay, so what's going to happen here? So it looks to me like I'm going to be able to cancel these, and then negative 12 divided by a negative 2. We're going to figure this out. Okay, so I have 6 equals... It looks like this is going to be a negative 6. So 6 equals negative 6 plus b. Move the negative 6 over, and I'm getting b equals 12. So what have I just found? I have found my demand equation because I just found the second part of it. So what is my demand equation? So let me get all this work out of the way. Remember, it's going to be a price equals. So price equals what was my slope? negative 1 over 200 times x uh, plus b. What's my b? My b was 12. There is my demand equation. So now I can get a revenue equation because what's revenue? Revenue is always price times quantity. The quantity is x. So revenue equals price times x which equals, I'm going to use this parentheses, negative 1 over 200 x plus 12 times x, because the first piece is my price. So that's going to equal negative 1 over 200x squared plus 12x. Okay, so we're going to go on the next page to figure out the rest of this. All right, so I just copied over what I just did for my price. So here's my revenue. So I have my price, I have my revenue, and now I'm ready to get my marginal revenue because that's what they asked me to figure out. So um, bring down your 2, right? So that's going to be negative 2 over 200. So it's really negative 1 over 100 x plus 12. That's my marginal revenue. Let's take the second derivative and make sure we're heading the right way. That's going to be negative 100. If that's the case, I know that my um, second derivative is always negative, and therefore I, I know that my function is concave down and the x that I'm going to solve for will guarantee I've maximized my revenue. So go ahead and set your r prime equal to zero and let's get the revenue that we need. So if r prime equals a zero, I'm going to get 12 equals negative 1 over 200, no positive 1 over 200 x and then I'm going to multiply the right side by 100 and the left side by 100 and I get 1200 equals X and that's going to be the X I need to sell in order to maximize revenue. Alright, since I know that price was a function in this situation, I can figure out the price that should be charged to make sure that I am able to um, sell 1200 and so price equals negative 1 over 200 X plus 12, plug in that 1200 and you will get your price, which will equal $6, which was one of the prices that we were already charging. That price is going to be the best one because that's going to enable us to maximize our revenue. So at this point, I could calculate the revenue as well if I wanted to. So be able to answer all the questions you possibly can about a problem that you've solved. And now we're ready for the last page. Okay, on this last page, they're talking about maximizing profits, 
and we know that profit with a capital P equals revenue minus costs. And we know that revenue is price, which is P with a small p, times quantity sold. And we know sometimes price is a function, sometimes it's a constant. So these are all the things that you now know. So let's go ahead and we're going to read this problem. Suppose that the demand equation for a monopolist, okay, demand equation we know is the price equation, is price equals 100 minus 0.01x. Okay, shouldn't be a shocker that that's a downward sloping demand curve and looks kind of like that. Okay, they also give us the cost function. And the cost function is also linear, but it's going the other way. So it is upward sloping. So it says find the value of x that maximizes the profit and determine the corresponding price and total profit for this level of production. All right, what do I need to do? Well, first thing, I need to figure out my revenue. Luckily, I have a price equation, unlike the last problem where I had to develop it. So my demand equation is price equals 100 minus 0.01x. So therefore, I know revenue is price times quantity. So revenue is going to be 100x minus 0.01x squared. There is my expression for revenue. So my profit with a capital P is going to be total revenue, which will be 100 minus 0.01x squared, and then subtract cost. Now, this is where many people will make an error. Use a bracket or parentheses to subtract cost because cost is an expression that has two terms. Okay? So... That's going to allow me to distribute that negative right here appropriately to both terms, not just the first term. So profit equals 100 minus 0.01x squared minus 50x and then minus 10,000. Okay, so that's my profit. Can I combine anything? Yes, I can, but is it worth the effort? Since the two things I could combine don't have any x's and therefore they're going to fall out when I take the first derivative. So I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to leave well enough alone. And did I do a mistake here? Let me just think for a second. Oh yes, when I copied it down, this should have an x. That should have an x. Okay, that was almost a mistake. But we caught it. So now I'm going to restate what I said about combining like terms. Because look, this guy now has an x. So can't I combine him with this one over here? So let's go one more step now. Profit equals 100x minus 50x is going to give me 50x. All right, so let's write it in standard form, which means I'm going to first write the coefficient of the quadratic term. Now I know I had positive... 50x combining those two terms and then minus 10,000. All right, so now get your profit that's going to maximize or get your value that's going to maximize by taking the first derivative and I get negative 0.02x plus 50. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and take my second derivative which will be negative 0.02 and that means that I have guaranteed that the x I solve for will indeed maximize my profit. What would that x be? If I solved my p prime equation, then I'm going to get an x. Let me just make sure I'm all good here. Yes, my x will be 2,500. Okay, what else do they ask for? So that's um, find the value of x and determine the corresponding price. So here's one thing I know. My x is 2,500. Take that x of 2,500 and put it back in your demand equation, which is this equation right up here. And when I do that, I can figure out what my price is going to be. And you can check this yourself, but I'm getting price to be $75. So every unit 
I sell, I sell for twenty five for seventy five dollars. Okay, the next thing I can figure out is what is my total revenue, um, what is my total cost, and what's my total profit. So I'm just going to jump ahead, and I'll tell you that capital P will equal fifty two thousand five hundred dollars. And you can check all this. You can also figure out total revenue and total cost. Okay? The next problem I haven't really set up, so I'm going to tell you what we're going to say for that. We're going to use the exact same things we have, but instead of doing what we've done here, we're going to introduce an excise tax to see what happens with our results. So I know right now I'm producing... Uh, 2,500 units and I'm selling them for $75. What if a tax gets placed on um, my product? What do I do as a smart monopolist? So let's do that on the next page. All right, when we analyze excise taxes, I've brought over our solution from the previous page so that we can compare it to what happens when we have an excise tax. So Let's assume that the excise tax, and I don't have this typed here, so I'm going to say the government puts a tax of, so the tax equals $10 per unit, per unit produced. How is that going to impact things? So we're going to have the same exact equations. So we know that profit with a capital P equals total revenue minus total cost. The tax will be attached to the total cost. So profit's going to be, let's see where I was, okay, so profit equals my total revenue had been 100x minus 0.01x squared. Remember we got that by multiplying x times the demand equation. So this is total revenue. Now, let's subtract away total cost, just like we did previously. Total cost previously had been 50 times x plus 10,000. So I need one more zero. Okay, but now I'm telling you I'm adding another um, cost, and that cost is $10 per unit. It's a tax. So it's going to be added on to the cost right here. So what I can do is I can combine 50x and 10 more x. So that means that I now have 60x plus 10,000 as my cost. So let's now go to the next line and we're going to continue to build our profit function. So I have 100x minus 0.01x squared minus, so 50x and 10x, we minus 60x. Remember to distribute the negative to the 10,000. All right, so now what can I combine? So I do have a 60x and a 100x. So I'm going to subtract those. So my next line is that price is going to equal 40x minus 0.01x squared minus 10,000. And let's clean this up. So putting it in standard form, 0 0.01, a negative 0.01x squared plus 40x minus 10,000 will be my profit equation. I see that it's a parabola. I see it's a downward facing parabola. So I'm expecting that if I take a derivative, I will be maximizing profit. So let's take our derivative and I get negative 0.02x plus 40. So take my second derivative just to make sure everything is good and I get a negative. As I would assume, that means that my function's concave down and that my x that I get as a critical value will indeed maximize profit. So solve for your x. In this situation, my x now equals 2,000. Previously, it was 2,500 before the tax. 
So solve for your price. My price, and that should be a little piece. I'm just going to write out the word price. Is going to be um, increased, and what will the new price be? Figure it out. Okay, if you do the math, you should have got that the new price is now eighty dollars. So they're charging more, and they're making less. Why are they doing all that? Well, they are covering that um, tax. So the impact of the tax is that the price of the product goes up and the quantity produced goes down. And that's how taxes work. So who made the money? The government. Who incurred the cost? The consumer. Because that cost got just passed right on. All right, so that's the end of um, this section. That's also the end of the chapter. So you should be in good shape. Go back over, listen to whatever you need to know. There are some huge essentials here. You have to know how to create a demand equation. You have to know how to figure out profit given total revenue and total cost. You have to understand that sometimes price is a function and sometimes price is a constant and be able to handle all of that. And clearly you need to know how to take derivatives correctly. You need to know how to subtract carefully so that you use parentheses when needed. And you need to know how to interpret your results and to do some graphing. So good luck. Tackle that homework and you will be all set.